Hi, welcome to this edition of Whiteboard Wednesdays. And today we're going to continue our series in load balancing algorithms. And today we're going to talk about the fastest algorithm, the observed algorithm, the predictive algorithm, and the dynamic ratio algorithm. And we're going to start with the fastest. And when you think of fastest, you're obviously thinking, you know, races, first one down the track wins, that kind of thing. But how does Big IP determine that? Well, it's not using any information from the servers directly. It's using an indirect calculation. And how it does that is for each one of these pool members, so I have nine pool members to account for, and we'll just focus in on these three. So if I have a, a, um, a connection request come in here to Big IP from a client, and it's going to send that request out here to this server, and then, you know, I end up with like 30 connections and say I have five here, six here, and 10 here. Now, all of those requests are things that have been sent back to the server, but assume for the moment that none of these responses have come back into the Big IP. Well, at this point, the Big IP is keeping a counter for every server in the pool, uh, for pool or for member load bouncing, uh, for the fastest node, it's going to be at the IP layer. Um, but so I have, um, I might have a lot of active running connections on these, but these are my outstanding connections to these pool members. So what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, so for pool member one, I currently have five outstanding. And an outstanding connection means that, that for the request sent to this pool member, it, the big IP has not received a response um, on, that, on that request. And so for number two, I have six. And uh, for number three, I have 10. Now assume all these are, are, you know, also there's in there, but assume for the moment all six of these are much higher than five, six, and 10. Pool member one is going to get that next con connection because it only has five outstanding connections. So uh, the lowest counter when a new request comes in wins in, in the fastest algorithm. Uh, a couple things to note about that. The first thing is if you're going to use the fastest algorithm, you have to use an L7 profile like HTTP and the TCP profile. If those are assigned, you can use uh, the fastest. And then the other point to make is that with uh, one connect, if you have one connect enabled on your virtual server, then the idle connections do not count against this counter. So one connect uh, establishes connections with the servers in your pools and it, and it holds them idle for other connections so it can, it, it's essentially connection reuse. And so in the event there are, are idle connections, those connection counts are not part of this equation. Now we're going to talk about the observed algorithm and what it's doing is it's taking a look at the uh, current active L4 connections. And active is important. Again, if you have one connect established, it's not going to take into account those idle connections. But say, you know, if I have uh, currently w um, uh, one, three, and five are my current active connections, what it's going to do uh, for its next calculation, it's going to look at all three of these and it's going to say, well, I only have one here. So I'm going to increase my ratio here. And I have five here, so I'm going to decrease my ratio here. And, and likely, you know, the, the pool members in the middle um, are, are going to likely stay uh, roughly the same. And so the next time this comes around, this calculation, um, this calculation here, the next time it comes around uh, for observed is it's going to be, maybe it's going to be three, three, three and then it'll just be kind of a round robin. Um, but then maybe a glut of connections comes in and we end up with 10 and 12 and one. And again, you know, the, uh, the, tr the, uh, the ratio for this guy is gonna be increased and then the ratio for this guy is gonna be decreased and there will probably because of the disparity here, uh, this guy will probably end up going down as well. Um, I'd highly recommend getting out to Wireshark and, and putting some of these uh, methods uh, on your uh, uh, pool and, and, and test it. And then the predictive load balancing algorithm on top of that, it's, it's observed, but it actually looks at the trend. So it's doing that calculation. It's, it's making that observation of where the current L4 connections are, but the way it differs from the observed delete, erase these real quick, um, is it's going to look at the delta. So, you know, you're taking a delta of, of state. So in iteration one, 
Um, and let's, let's start with different numbers here. So if we start with, let's say we have five connections here, 10 connections here, and 15 connections here. And so when I, when I look at the first state, I see five, 10, 15. At the second state, I'm gonna look at seven, I'm gonna still be at 10 here, uh, but then I'm gonna be at 10. And so second state, seven, 10, 10. Well, this is a plus two, and this is a even, and this is a negative five. And so with predictive, what, uh, what happens is if the trending is going down, then the ratio is dialed up. So here, this one's down, so we're gonna increase the ratio. Here, it, it's actually <laughs> reversed. The trend is up, meaning the connection count is going up, and so we wanna trend that ratio down. And anything that comes in the same is, is going to not be changed in that cycle. And so that's a, a more aggressive algorithm than observed. So, uh, you know, that might be a, if you're gonna choose one of those two, the predictive is probably a, a little better. Finally, we're gonna talk about the dynamic ratio. And what the dynamic ratio does is it actually takes active data points from a server. And it does that by attaching a monitor to your pool, uh, like WMI or one of the SNMP monitors. And so it's actively polling your, uh, your server for data points, not just how is it performing on the wire in relation to big IP, but it's giving data back to big IP, like CPU and memory. And so it takes that information and it calculates a ratio and then highest ratio wins, just like the, the, you know, the standard ratio uh, based upon your manual configuration that we talked about in the last video. And so these ratios aren't static, they, they change as the status from the servers change. Um, and, and so from an example, we have big IP and say it's taking SNMP uh, monitor and it's polling these servers and it gets back from these servers that, that uh, based upon the, the calculation of, of CPU and memory and, and whatever else that you want to include in uh, the particular monitor that you established, say that this one is 60% uh, available, this one's 80% available, um, and this one's 100% available, then it's gonna build a ratio based upon the score that comes back from that server. And so this ratio is gonna be higher this one's gonna be lower and this one's gonna be somewhere in the middle. And so when requests start coming in, then because this one is mostly available, then by the dynamic ratio that was calculated, the requests are gonna come here. And as more and more requests come here, CPU and memory are gonna be more taxed, that ratio is gonna go down, and, and so it, it keeps that uh, ebb and flow uh, going. As far as uh, use cases are concerned, um, I worked in an environment where we had a lot of terminal servers and we didn't end up employing it uh, or deploying it, but we looked at uh, the possibility of using WMI clients on all the, on all the terminal servers because the problem we were getting into is whereas TCP responded very quickly and, uh, and we knew it was available, we didn't really know how the server was performing until we knew it wasn't performing. Um, there was no real uh, method on the wire to, to establish that. Uh, by using something like WMI, you can get the, the data back from that and you know uh, there's a threshold depending on the, the type of terminal server connection that was established, whether they were driving applications really hard or they were using a, a, really, uh, a really easy thin client, um, then uh, we might get overtaxed on a particular server because of what they were doing, not because there were more connections on it. And so that would have been really helpful uh, to establish uh, the server telling us or telling Big IP uh, how it's being or you know how busy it is. Another uh, good use case is for uh, servers that do batch processing. They get a, a job and he may be working on that job for four hours, whereas these guys get uh, jobs that are, are a lot less. Well, something that's working on a on a very large report, you know, CPU memory is going to be through the roof. The other one's not so much, and so uh, dynamically take itself out of the equation. Uh, just by resources alone.